I think it's safe to say that the LG G Flex is a phone unlike any other, and mainly because of this very pronounced curve. Now, is that uniqueness a good thing or a bad thing? I'm Andrew with MobileBurn.com, reviewing the LG G Flex, and we're about to find out. The G Flex is defined by three characteristics big, curved, and glossy. Let's go through them right now. Now, the big side is fairly obvious. This is a gigantic phone. Just for comparison's sake, here it is next to a Samsung Note 3. Now, the Note 3 itself is a pretty big phone, but you see that the G Flex is taller, not quite wider, a little bit wider and it's a little bit thicker. It's 6.3 by 3.2 inches, so you know it's definitely on the large side. And the reason for that large side takes us into the curve, which is the screen. This is a six inch curved OLED display. It's a very unique type of thing. LG worked a lot to introduce this uh, curved atmosphere. And the reason for it, I'm not exactly sure. They've come out with some marketing speech, but in terms of actual practical use day to day, the main thing that they try to stress is that it has sort of a cinematic feel. So when you're watching videos, you should perceive more of uh, a cinematic feature, whatever that means. I never felt it. To me, it was just a screen that was pretty big. And the problem with that is it's a 720p screen. So I was actually kind of disappointed with that. Uh, the the pixel density isn't as good as we've seen on other phones. When you have a screen this large, being only 720p is going to be a hindrance. It's not an end of the world type of thing by any means. I was definitely able to look at pictures, look at videos without much problems, but I did look for that and I'm the type of person that looks for it. So if you're not the type of person that can notice the difference between 720p and 1080, you should be fine. But at a screen this big, I would have hoped that they would have had a higher resolution, and they didn't do that. One of the things with using the curve is that it can sometimes feel a little bit awkward, uh, but it can sometimes feel kind of cool. And one of those reasons is that when you scroll up, because your fingers naturally go into the groove, you get this very comfortable flowing motion of just going up and down, going up and down, and curving into it. And I actually like that. That was one of the, the positive things about it being a curved display. Sometimes it was a little weird. Uh, my eyes needed time to adjust. For instance, when I was reading text in the browser, it looked a little weird because when you look at the bottom, you can kind of see the little way that it fades away. You know, like in the beginning of Star Wars, when you see the words get smaller and bigger? That's not, it's not that dramatic. I'm not saying it does that. But your eyes kind of uh, perceive some type of effect. That went away after a short while, but it was still a little strange. I also noticed there was a little blue tint, but uh, when I spoke with other people, they said they didn't see it. So I think it might be down to my eyes adjusting to this type of display and this being an isolated incident because I checked with multiple people who have a G Flex. None of them had a problem with the screen. So my only real issue with the screen was the fact that it's 720 rather than 1080. Now on the glossy side, <laughs> Here we go again with typical plastic that we've seen, but it's actually kind of good because this time the plastic is not the same glossy texture that we typically see on all plastic phones like from LG and Samsung. This one has a special coating on it. It has self-healing. So if you scratch it up a little bit, uh, it should heal itself over time. Now, if you go and rake your keys across it, with full force, that's not going to do it. But if it's just a light thing where your keys scratch across it while it's in your pocket, this can actually survive. I noticed that it had a couple of light scratches when I first got the phone uh, after a day or two, but within three or four days, all the scratches were gone. I didn't make any heavy inter intentional scratching because LG discourages you from doing that because that can mess up the phone. On the back while we're here, you also notice that it has the same buttons that we had on the G2, which is very cool. I'm the type of person that got used to using the G2. Uh, even though this is a big phone, it's kind of challenging to use with one hand. If you just place your index finger on the back, you're right on the volume up and down keys and the power button as well. The power button is also a nice touch this time because it acts as your notification light. It glows. So if you put the phone on its face when it's on your desk, you have a secondary notification light. And if you put it on the back, 
It also there's also a notification light up here. So there's some really cool touches to the LG G Flex in terms of hardware. And while we're on the subject of hardware, we should do a quick spec rundown. This has a 2.26 gigahertz quad core processor. It's a Snapdragon 800, so you know it moves along very fast. You can pretty much copy and paste everything I said about the G2. It's great for gaming, great for loading stuff, and it performs very well. Then you've got two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, 24 gigs that you can actually access. And this is the AT&T model, so it's got 4G LTE and HSPA Plus where available. Bluetooth 4.0, low energy, and NFC so you can do your ISIS payments if you have the special card. And most importantly, it's got a 3500 milliamp battery. This thing was amazing in terms of battery life. I left the house early in the morning, came home late at night, perfect. Next day, left the house early in the morning, didn't use the phone as much, still made it almost two days without having to recharge. That's very rare among any handset, especially Android smartphones. And this was probably one of the better performing smartphones that I've used in recent times. So in terms of actual performance, this uh, phone, the G Flex, is pretty phenomenal. I, I have to give it very high marks in terms of of performance. Now design and software, <laughs> well, that's a little bit trickier. There's no Android 4.4 on the G Flex, so you're going to have to make do with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, for the time being at least. But LG is trying to make up for it by adding some cool features along the way, one of them being Quick Theater. That basically jumps directly into my photos, videos, or YouTube app. And this is one case where having the curved display actually works out pretty well for you, because you get kind of this pseudo carousel effect when you're browsing through. It's subtle, but it's very pleasing to look at. Uh, when you're sharing photos with someone or just looking at them for yourself. Aside from that, it's pretty much what we've seen from LG before in terms of icons and style, but thankfully they've added the option to theme it so you can get something made specifically for the G Flex. The colors look a little bit better. The icon choices, still not very great, but it's better than what you had before. When you swipe down from the top is where you see your notifications. And this is where you really get to see LG shine because they throw everything at you. There's three ways to do one thing pretty much all the time. Just like what we saw with the, G, uh, the G2. So here's QSlide. This allows me to have many app windows open. So I can have this video open in one place and then open the browser in another. And you can have uh, three or four of these open at once, as long as it fits on the screen, and this is a big screen, you can do it. But there's actually another way to multitask, and that is having uh, two apps open at once. So let me see if I can just find it really quick. Oh wait, I know how to get to it. Holding down on the back button brings up this split screen that allows me to have uh, Chrome open in one place, and I can have YouTube open in another. So if I'm watching a YouTube video about the Olympics, I can say, hey, what time did the Olympics come on? And then I can split the window and have another view. But there's yet another view of having multitasking. Uh, you can hold down, of course, to see all of the open apps that you have, or you can save a specific app. So if I open the browser app and swipe across with three fingers, Oh wait, I've got too many open already. But usually when you swipe across with three fingers, uh, it pushes it to the side and bookmarks it. So when I swipe left with three fingers, now I see the apps that I had previously saved. So that's one way of one of many ways to go about multitasking on the G Flex. So I've showed you uh, dual window, I showed you Q slide and slide aside. Uh, and that's one example where I was talking about how LG really tries to throw a lot at you. Another thing they've done is they've included an IR blaster so you can actually control your remote, uh, your television and use the G Flex as a remote. Of course, there's the keyboard, which is kind of cool. Uh, it has gesture support built in, so if I swipe with my hand, uh, it f tries to figure out the word that I've meant to type, or I can just type the regular way, and it'll have some uh, basic level autocorrection. So, obviously, LG tries to do a lot and tries to make up for a lot. Sometimes, it doesn't always go your way. Uh, one of those ways is that they increase this with a lot of bloatware. You see, I have this folder marked at t crap. There's nearly 20 apps that are preloaded on this device. Uh, of course, you've got your Google services, and you've got Google Play 
So you can have access to nearly a million apps. And when you're in the app drawer, you can make these icons smaller just in case you're wondering. Uh, if you're not someone who likes the really large apps, you can just switch it to the small app, the small icon size. In terms of the software, one more thing you should check out is the camera. The camera is a 13 megapixel shooter on the back, and it's it's pretty decent. It's similar to what we saw on the G2. So let me switch from the front facing camera back to the rear camera all right and i'll slide down a little bit and you they try to make the interface fairly simple but it does hide that you can do a lot of things you can take a picture you can record a video by switching there and when you're recording the video you can actually snap a picture by tapping that icon so it won't interrupt your recording session it keeps recording the video but you did take a picture let me exit out of there so you can see the many, and when I do mean many, I mean many, camera modes that you have available to you. There's a panorama, there's a dynamic tone, which is basically HDR. There's another panorama, a VR panorama. It's a dual camera, which allows you to use the rear and the front facing camera at the same time. Time catch shot, which will record uh, before and after you actually press the button so it knows what to do. Night, which improves the night photos, obviously. Sport for high motion. And intelligent auto, which will always recognize the setting that you want to have on there. And that's the one you should leave it on the most because unless you're going to manually switch over to something that you know is going to affect it, it's best to leave it on intelligent auto instead of normal. I found that intelligent auto tends to do better. It doesn't always take the perfect shot because sometimes it's a little bit noisy. Sometimes it's a little bit dark, darker than I'd expect. I thought the G2 was a pretty good camera. This is a good camera, but it doesn't have the same level of stabilization and uh, settings that you had on the G2 in terms of the camera. So it is good, but it's not as great. I've been using the G Flex as my main phone for the past almost three weeks now and I was actually surprised that I didn't hate it because when I used this briefly at CES I thought the phone was just flat out too big and it is a giant phone uh, despite my giant hands making it seem semi-normal trust me this is a large phone uh, when you got a six inch display it's kind of hard to get over that but uh, because it's curved a little bit uh, because uh, it doesn't actually feel that intrusive all the time. I was actually able to put this in my back pocket and go about my business. But I wouldn't recommend sitting with this on the back pocket because I did that one day and it required a little too much pressure. When you have a name like Flex in your title and it has a bendable screen, people naturally think, oh, it's bendable, but it's not. You'll see that when you apply pressure along the back, it instantly bends a little bit and it kind of restricts, uh, kind of... Uh, kind of responds negatively. It's kind of telling you, hey, don't break me because you can break this. I'm sure of it. Uh, I was able to apply a little bit of pressure uh, unintentionally and it didn't crack or anything. So that's good. So if it were me, I'd just get an LG G2. You get all the benefits of the G Flex without that big size and that awkward curve. Now with the G Flex, you do get a longer battery and a bigger screen, but we're talking about a one inch difference in terms of screen and the G2 battery is still very good. But if you insist on getting the biggest screen possible with the longest lasting battery possible, the G Flex is your option and it's available to you. It might have some small fringe benefits like LG says that when you put the microphone closer to your cheeks, you actually have better sound. But the people I spoke to said that the phone quality was very good, but they didn't notice a particular difference compared to other phones that I called in, in uh, the same window. But at the same time, this is the G Flex. And if you'd like to know more about it, be sure to click the link in the description below so you can see photo and video samples and get a more complete picture of my thoughts on the device. This is Andrew with MobileBurn.com and DailyMobile.net. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.